It's going to take the corporate media a couple more days to calm down from the Democrats' disastrous loss regarding the gubernatorial race in Virginia on Tuesday. And while Joy Reid is the biggest racist at MSNBC, this guest host did her best to try to fill Joy's gigantic racist shoes. This isn't about enthusiasm. This isn't about Democrats not doing enough to exercise their base. And this definitely is not about messaging or even about beloved. This is about the fact that a good chunk of voters out there are okay with white supremacy. Let's call a thing a thing. Actually, scratch that. They are more than okay. It's insanity like this which gave birth to the popular everyone I don't like is Hitler meme. By the way, Glenn Youngkin's lieutenant governor, the second in command of the state, the governor's right hand, in this case woman, is black. Her name is Winsome Sears, and here she is pictured holding an AR-15. Of course, Joy Reid won't acknowledge that she exists, let alone have her on her show to debate her about the insane things that Joy has been saying about the governor's race. I wish Joy Reid would invite me on her show. I'm, let's see if she's woman enough to do that. I'd go in a heartbeat and we have a real discussion without Joy speaking about me behind my back, if you will. A lot of people are particularly upset with white women because 15% of them swung back to the right in comparison to how they voted in the 2020 election, thus pushing Glenn Youngkin over the top. On Wednesday, the day after the election, white women was one of the top trends on Twitter from so many idiots complaining about them. Clowns like this, who of course has purple hair, who tweeted, quote, white women voters are foot soldiers of white supremacist patriarchy. In Virginia, white women swung back towards the GOP by 15 percentage points compared to 2020. And then there's this guy, I'm sorry, this person, we don't want to assume this individual's gender, who is particularly upset with white women. What the f is your purpose other than ruining the f casserole? What the f is your purpose other than voting against your better interests? It seems like every year white women just keep getting worse. Aren't they getting worse? If you look at the electorate, white women continue to vote for Republicans. Every year it keeps going up. It keeps going up. So my question is, why the f should we trust a lily white White women can't be trusted. Well, no, Kenny, don't be so mean to them. You know, white suburban women are going to get it together. No, you're not. The corporate media in this country doesn't just spew fake news 24-7 or even partisan nonsense. They are slanderous devils. You have to be willing to vocalize that these Republicans are dangerous. <laughs> that this isn't a party that's just another political party that disagrees with us on tax policy. That at this point, they're dangerous. They're dangerous to our national security because stoking that kind of soft white nationalism eventually leads to the hardcore stuff. It leads to the January 6th stuff because if people are tolerant of it in your party, they're tolerant of the soft racism, mm. it's a really short trip to get to the January 6th insurrectionist place. Speaking of white nationalists, Joy Richard Spencer, the leader of the alt-right, voted for Joe Biden. <laughs> That's not a joke, by the way. He really did. And I swear to God, he's not being sarcastic in this clip. As someone just said in the chat, we are you still voting for Biden? Yes, I'm voting straight Democrats. Uh, and that includes Joe Biden. Not only did he vote for Joe Biden, but he thinks he's doing a great job. Your thoughts on the Biden performance so far, since that is going to be the main gist of the debate, right? This this is your opening to defend the indefensible. Uh, it's not indefensible by any stretch. Um, I I think the only criticisms of Biden that are given in good faith amount to nitpicking. Uh, Biden has absolutely exceeded my expectations. <laughs> I'm serious. He's not being sarcastic. That was the leader of the alt-right. Remember, they were the boogeymen that were used in the 2016 election to try to paint all Trump-supporting social media personalities as racists. Because he's a loser and most likely a Fed, his movement imploded. And so during the 2020 election, the new boogeymen were the Proud Boys and QAnon. Of course, that skirt-wearing gender non-binary student who reportedly raped a girl in a school bathroom in Virginia mobilized parents, and so the liberal media industrial complex is getting quite concerned that parents are now more involved in what it is that's happening in the schools. And the one thing that we need to make sure that uh, Republicans in 2022 don't become is the party of parents, mm -hmm. uh, because we need to be the party of parents. <laughs> you know, it's going to be tough for the Democrats to be the party of parents when so many of them abort their children. But CNN has tried to find the silver lining to Democrat Terry McAuliffe's epic failure. 
who campaigned that there were too many white teachers teaching the kids in school and that the parents shouldn't have a say in what it is that those teachers are teaching by celebrating some of the non-white candidates who won that day. A night of historic outcomes in some big mayoral races, Michelle Wu, the first woman and person of color to become mayor in Boston, Cincinnati electing its first Asian Pacific mayor, Aftab Puraval, Elaine O'Neill is the first black woman to hold the post in Durham, North Carolina, and Ed Ganey becoming Pittsburgh's first black mayor. Yay, less white people! I, I mean, more diversity! Here's PBS reporter Yamichi Oyakunit expressing her frustration that Republicans are finally starting to push back in the culture war. What should Democrats possibly do differently to avoid similar losses in November, especially as Republicans are now successfully running on culture war issues and false claims about from a critical race theory? Mainstream conservatives and Republicans have been soft on cultural issues for 20 years now. It wasn't until just a few months ago that they finally stopped being afraid to push back against the anti-white racism, because for all this time they've been afraid that they would be called a racist just for denouncing it. But now, thanks to a small number of brave individuals who have helped blaze the trail, denouncing the cultural Marxism, critical race theory, which again is just a fancy term for anti-white racism, and the social justice, stupidity, and wokeness, is one of the primary things that Republicans are doing. Isn't it, Ron DeSantis? If you look at what's going on with, with some of the big corporations, with their woke agenda, when you look at the Biden, the Brandon administration, in terms of what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> the Brandon administration, that's a good one, sir. And Let's Go Brandon mania continues to sweep the country, and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. So order your Let's Go Brandon shirt from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Also pick up an embroidered Let's Go Brandon beanie. Or if that's not your style, get an Arrest Dr. Fauci shirt, a Liberalism Find a Cure shirt, or any of my awesome designs, all available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.